Hey guys, how's it going? It's Ben. I'm on my way to Birmingham to meet Bid, the legendary drummer for Left Field and many other artists. Uh, that guy is so good with electronics, it's crazy. He is an absolute genius. So I'm going to go meet Bid, a fellow Sabian artist as well. Awesome. And we're going to shoot some videos together. So he's put this crazy new like electronic kit together. I don't really don't know what it is. He just said, come and play it. You're going to love it. So I'm going to shoot a video of me kind of jamming on that. And he's going to teach me some stuff about electronics, like how to incorporate electronics onto the kit and into my playing, which is really exciting. And it's something that I've really wanted to get into for a while, but I'm just such a noob with that whole world. I'm trying to sort of learn more. So Bid is going to teach me and hopefully I can then share some of that with you guys. So packing all my stuff now for Birmingham, about to hit the road, go and see the man. Hey man, how are you? I'm good. This is, well introduce yourself, tell, tell, uh, tell the good people who you are, what you do. My name's Bid, uh, I'm a drummer, specifically an electronic drummer it seems, more and more these days. Um, working for artists like Leftfield, uh, above and beyond, in the electronic world, also for um, Rodriguez in the acoustic world, uh, the Edwin Starr band, and back to the electronic world with a, an outfit called Bootlegger, um, as well as my own stuff as BID. So yeah, pretty busy. Out of all the people I know, Bid is the, the electronics master. So it's crazy. I've, I've come down to play the kit today. Um, so you'll see a bit of me thrashing around, trying to make sense of it and having some fun. It's very different they're in a different mindset playing a setup like this. So this is the Yamaha DTX 900M, um, the, 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 the pads here. This is the DTX Multi 12M. Um, everything runs through this chaos pad here. All the outputs, when I say everything runs through it, the outputs of the brain of the module, the DTX 900M, everything runs out of there into this and then out of there to the speakers, okay? Um, and that's pretty much it. That is all it is, it's just two bits of kit. Oh, and over there, sorry, there is one more bit, of course. There's a computer which has Ableton on it. But at the moment, what you're about to hear, nothing's coming from Ableton. It's all coming from the kit. In fact, there's no click. I'll take this out just to prove that this has got no click to it whatsoever. So, so what's on the kit is, um, it's a track by Madian, an artist called Madian, and the track's called Icarus. And um, I've got single samples from that track. It's just a stereo audio track. So I've got something on the kick drum. If I hit the kick drum, you hear? I've got that sample on the kick drum. I have a sample on the snare. Okay, that's just a rip shot. So there's three, there's three sample points on this snare pad. You've got the, the pad, the rim, and then the top, which is another rim. Okay, the hi-hat, which is just a normal hi-hat. Again, there's three zones here three trigger points that is. There's one there, one there, and there's a rim there. So that's three sample points. The same here, and another rim, and a rim. So, I've been lazy. Obviously, I'm only using two on this. So I've got samples on there, that's one sample. That's a different sample. Sample, same sample on the snare. Sample, sample. The reason I've got the same sample on the snare is when I play, when I play acoustic kits, I usually end up rimming the, the snare at the same time, that's snare and the rim. I'm, I'm hitting them both at the same time, that's not some kind of sexual uh, uh, thing that's going on there. Um, so, so with, with this, if I hit it like that or hit it like that, it doesn't matter. I'm going to get the same sound, okay? And then I've got a sample on here. On the cymbals you've got a, a, a trigger, trigger, trigger. Another. Okay, so on here, I've just set that up the same. That's all the same going right through. So I've got the same sample here and here. But here on the bell, here on the bell, there's a different sample. I've got a, a bass note there. And I've got three samples on here. One, two, three. So that's what I've got. As you can tell, I've forgotten what's on there. So this will be interesting to see what, what see what happens next.
there you go. Electronics, it's a, it's a minefield. And with, with drumming, you sit there for hours and hours and hours, as we all have, with our Buddy Rich Rudiments book open, mm -hmm. going right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left flam taps and flamadiddles and god knows what else yeah the 40 rudiments that we all strive to absolutely nail and spend hours and hours and hours and there are so many people out there and you can go on youtube and you can watch the likes of tony royster jr or whoever the the list is is enormous as we all know mm -hmm. and they're doing it they're absolutely they're all out there doing it if you want to go and have a look at how to do a paradiddle there are probably two thousand people out there if you ask someone how to get MIDI going from A to B, from your drum kit to a computer, there's very few. Mm -hmm. Because you have to sit there with manuals from these modules that you get and read them, and it's boring. It's yeah. really boring. However, uh, there are people like myself who are now beginning to say to people, look, I've kind of done the work, I've got the experience and I've got the knowledge of how to do this. It's really not difficult, and it really isn't. Mm. It's just getting data from A to B, mm -hmm. that's all it is. Um, and once you start getting your head around that, you realize that the modules and the computers and the hardware that is out there, if it's got a MIDI port on it in and a MIDI port out, you can get it to talk to another device that has MIDI in and MIDI out. It's just understanding how those boxes work. Yep. But they all work in the basic, in the basic way. I, you know, I guess it's been brought more into the mainstream through metal with you know, triggers being put on yeah. kicks, for example, yeah. yes, that was, you know, uh, and seeing, see, people seeing people sort of trigger or augment sounds over their kit, but what would you say to like, the person out there that wants to start to get into creating sounds, or creating different sounds and textures from their kit, and they're not sure how to go about it, like if, if someone said, how, it, what would be some ways to get started, to start experimenting without spending loads of money on, on gear, like what would be a basic way to get into that? Okay. Um, if you've got a computer, the majority of people do have computers now. Yeah. If you've got a computer, download, I think you can get Ableton for free now. I think Ableton Lite, it won't be the sweet version, but I think Ableton Lite is something you can get for free. Okay. Um, you can go and get sound banks, libraries from Loop Masters and those types of places. There'll be free sample packs up there, which you can get hold of. Mm -hmm. Download them, get them, and start learning how these DAWs work. It's not drumming though. This is this is it's really important. It takes you away from the kit. Yeah. You know, so all of a sudden you're not you're not doing your rudiments and you're not you're not playing. You're adding something though. You're putting more content into your palette. Mm -hmm. It's about sound. And sound is so important. The sound that we get from an acoustic kit and the sound that we get from an electronic kit. And the sound that we make with our with our band, with a whether you're a session musician or whether you're part of a band, it's really important that that sound that you create. So you've really got to start um, concentrating and, and finding exactly what it is that you like that, and, and how you want to create that sound, you know? Mm -hmm. So get these sample packs and go through them and tick or put to one side the sounds that you like. You know, if you like it, the chances are someone else is going to like it. Yeah. You know, be confident with it. Don't, don't think, oh, no one's going to like that. Don't worry about what anyone else thinks. If you like it, put it to one side. And once you've got it to one side, then you can start thinking, I want to get that sound onto my kit. Mm -hmm. And that's when you start going, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. And there's ways, if you're using your computer and you've got an, a, a, a MIDI kit, whether it be a Behringer kit, whether it be the new Roland kit, whatever it is, you can do it. It's, yeah. it's possible to do it as long as you've got MIDI. It doesn't, you don't have to go out and spend five, six, seven thousand pound. You can get stuff going on with a 200 pound computer and a 200 pound uh, cheap 200 pound MIDI kit. You yeah. can still get stuff going on. You can start the process, you know, and you can have a lot of fun whilst yeah. doing it. Yeah, yeah. You know? and, and then if someone were to start using an acoustic kit, then really all they need is, all they need is a trigger maybe on the snare, That's right. for example. And then, Absolutely. And then that could just go into a basic drum module. That's right. Just for like, it doesn't even need to be that sensitive, is it? If you're, just, right. if you're just triggering it. Yep. And then that can connect via MIDI to There Ableton. you go. Absolutely. Yeah. And then as soon as it's in Ableton, you then get the sample from your library that you like. Yeah. You put it into Ableton onto a channel. Yeah. That when you hit that snare drum, which has the trigger on it, the data flies down the cable into the module. And then from the module, it triggers Ableton where your sound is. And the sound's there and you're off. 
all of a sudden it, it, it's like wow I've got a different sound yeah. on my snare drum you know going along with my live snare I've now got that Skrillex snare drum sound that I absolutely love from his latest record wow check that out yeah, oh yeah. that sounds fat that sounds great I want to get a kick drum on that and you just do the same process on the kick drum and you put the sound you, you put the sound in the computer and you put a kick on your kick drum and all of a sudden you've got you've got the backbeat of, a, of, of those Skrillex if you're using Skrillex whoever it, whoever it is mm. you know crazy and I, I think it's fantastic I do I think it's absolutely brilliant and yeah I, I, yeah, I, I think I think we should all go out and do it <laughs> cool well good to chat man I don't know whether you learned anything there I think it was just me telling everyone how wonderful the electronic no, no, it's, drums it's, are it's, it's, I think it's important to hear like a different approach and a different perspective. Well, uh, one thing I will say to add to it, it's been interesting you coming down here today. I've never, I have to say, I've never had anyone come down to my studio before and, and play and just go, here you go, this is the kit, <laughs> have a go, see what you think. I've never done that before. And it's been fantastic and educational to watch Ben's approach to playing. Thanks for watching. Thanks for having me. Thanks for letting me play this crazy setup. Cheers. Man. Uh, it's inspired me to actually start applying some to the kit. So we're going to dive into some nitty gritty Ableton stuff right now. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. This is Bid. Thanks for your time, man. Always a pleasure. All right. Dude. See you.